Hello everyone, welcome to our Creative English Language Learning and Teaching Activity CELTA presentation. I'm Afifa and I'll do a brief introduction for the game that we have developed together. Let's start! Our group decided to do drama games and we named it as Moody Travelers. Let's travel with different kind of moods. Our target audience are students who are in high school, especially for Form 4 students. This game will be perfect and suitable for students who are in intermediate proficiency level. Next, I will be presenting the significance of our project. First and foremost, my group members and I think that moods and emotions are important since it plays a vital part in learning. Did you guys realize that moods and adjectives are partly related? Adjectives can be used to describe the noun and moods are the element that help us to visualize and motion out the noun that we describe. With the presence of moods, we are able to convey messages in a more meaningful way. Hence, we come up with this game in hope to encourage students to use more adjectives in their daily life. In this game, we particularly focus on the situation and utterance that will occur during traveling in accordance with the theme of the lesson, which is block trotting. Okay, we are done with the first part of explanation. I'll pass the floor to the next presenter. Assalamualaikum and a very pleasant day. I am Nur Azalea Jamaluddin. And now, I would like to share with you the advantages of um, playing our drama game that we call Moody Travelers. So, Moody Travelers is a fun approach for the teachers to uh, utilize in a language class in order to teach all kinds of adjectives. Now, let's look at the first advantage of playing the game. First of all, there are a myriad of skills that the students can develop through playing this game. One of them being the analytical skills. So, um, driven by, uh, their mo by their extrinsic motivation to win the game, the students will have to pay close attention to their friends' sentence delivery as well as the non-verbal cues um, for them to be able to guess the um, emotion adjective that is being expressed by the performer. They have to observe, collect and gather all the cues that all the clues that they have received for them to be able to make logical reasoning as well as coming out with a guess. Second of all, considering that Moody Travelers is a game dealing with the expression of emotion adjectives, indirectly, the students will be able will be able to learn how to express their emotions better since they discover new adjectives. So through this game, they will be able to recollect their memories about uh, emotions that they might have felt or encounter but never acknowledge. Now the next advantage is that uh, utilizing this game in a language class uh, will tackle social problems. Now quoting an engineering and technology website which says a brutal millennial cocktail of gaming, social media, reality television and the cult of the individual have left us less likely to empathize. And we believe that this statement can also be applied in the context of Malaysian students as technology obsession is also a norm among Malaysian millennials. Now, um, how do Moody travelers help to control this problem? Well, this game will encourage the students to pay close attention to details, especially uh, nonverbal cues. Um, and this, this will instill awareness in the students um, about the importance of being sensitive and empathetic towards others' emotions in their daily life. Since uh, the game requires the students to pay close attention to non-verbal cues that the performer expresses, such as uh, gestures, facial expressions, what else, nuances of the voice and gesture. The students are also trained to be quick-witted as they need to probe for the adjectives hiding in the crossword puzzle and they will have to highlight them. So this will encourage them to work together, help each other to find the adjectives faster if they want to win the game. Um, and at the same time, the skills of sportsmanship and teamwork will be highlighted as they help each other. 
Last but not least, sequence of how Moody Travelers is played corresponds to the PPP model of integrating grammar. The PPP stands for a presentation, practice, and production. And this model uh, contributes to the internalization of structures in the long term memory. So that is all for the advantages of playing Moody Travelers. I hope you will benefit from this sharing. Thank you so much. See you next time. Hello guys, it's Emelina and I'll be explaining to you on how we conduct and play the Moody Traveler game. Without further ado, let's play! First and foremost, we're going to need jars with strips of sentences in them and we also need jars with strips of moods in them. The number of jars are equivalent to the number of groups. For example, if we have 5 groups, then we're going to need five jars of moods and five jars of sentences so 10 jars um, where one group will get two jars one jar of moods and one jar of sentences and then we're going to need the word puzzle handouts which all students will be given the word puzzle handouts each those are what we need for the game now, how do we play the Moody Traveler game? First of all, teacher will divide the class into groups of 5 or 6 where the groups will remain seated in their own circle or island. Teacher then will give each group 2 jars, like I mentioned before, 1 jar of moods and 1 jar of sentences. Next, all students will be given the word puzzle handouts each. Note that students will proceed with the game independently while the teacher will supervise and assist um, if needed as the students play the game. Step 3. In each group or island, one student will come up in front to choose a sentence and a mood from the respective jars. The student will say the selected sentence with the mood that he or she gets with the help of intonation, facial expression, simple movement, and gestures, etc. For example, um, sentence 3. Oh boy, I'm going to miss my flight. And then, mood 1. Angry. Oh boy, I'm going to miss my flight. In step 4, the rest of the students in the group will have to guess the mood portrayed and when guessed correctly, they will have to search for the mood in the puzzle handout and cross it out. If the rest of the students in the group cannot guess correctly within 15 seconds, the game will continue with another student's turn in the group to do as in step 3. You pick a sentence and then you pick a, a mood and then you have to say it um, with the help of those I've mentioned before. Alright, um, this will continue until all students in the group get their turns and the moods crossed out in the puzzle handouts are equivalent to the number of students in the, in the group. For example, if there are 5 students in a group, then there should be 5 words crossed in the word puzzle handouts, 5 moods guessed correctly. Once the students in the groups finish their turns, they will proceed to the second part of the game which is to choose 3 out of the total moods that they have crossed out in the puzzle. For example, if they have 5 moods crossed out in the word puzzle, they will have to choose 3 of the moods um, in order to proceed to the second part. Once they've done selecting the 3 moods, um, each student in their respective groups will have to come up with three sentences, one sentence for each mood. For example, uh, my group chose out of the five moods, my group chose cool, joyful, and shy. So, I will have to come up with three sentences. Each member will have to come up with three sentences each. So, I come up with one. She is so cool confronting the bullies. 2. Mama feels joyful because her dress arrived early than expected. And 3. Aban is feeling shy as he is not used to being the center of attention. So, um, that's about it. Step 8. 
If one group consists of five members, then there should be 15 sentences altogether. Three, 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 three. Once every member in the group finish coming up with sentences, one representative from the group will get the teacher to check their sentences. If all sentences are correctly written and the moods are correctly used, then the teacher will announce the group as the winner. However, if there are some mistakes in the sentences, the teacher will point it out and then the students in the group will have to work together to fix the sentences. The game can proceed until all groups finish playing them, but only three groups will be acknowledged as winners. To conclude, the better the students act out the moods by saying the sentences and also with the help of other gestures such as facial expressions, simple movements, and intonation, the faster their members to guess the moods correctly. The faster they guess the moods, the time taken to solve the puzzle will be shorter. The shorter the time taken to solve the puzzle, the faster they can proceed to build sentences and check with the teacher. Therefore, the chances of winning will be high. So, that is how we play the Moody Traveler game. It would have been fun if we could try it out together, but it's okay. Um, we had fun creating the game. Anyway, don't be moody whenever you travel. <laughs> That's all from me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. My name is Hajri Natasha and I'll be the person who will explain about one of the most crucial parts or elements for our drama game. So as mentioned by Ami, I guess you could tell that we are going to need a few materials or um, worksheet that will be handed out for the students and be used during the game. So let's take a look at the three mo main um, things for our game. The first one is the worksheet. The second one is the strips of phrase. The third one is the strips of emotions or moods. So, the reason why we came out with um, these worksheets is because we don't want the students to only enjoy and play the game, but we want the learning to be more efficient and more effective by getting them to jot down and get them to physically do things. Let's take a look at the instructions. The reason why we have instructions on worksheet is because although the teacher will explain briefly how the game goes but we still need to jot down or write down the instructions in the worksheet. Now this is because some students tend to forget the moment they started um, playing therefore the instructions on the worksheet is very important. Now I believe some of you might have questioned why do we have two sets of instructions on the same worksheet uh, for the same game. The reason why we have that is because although this game seems simple but it needs for the students to take a lot of steps to complete the game. We have decided to um, separate the first part and the second part. Now the first part is the instructions that you see on top. Now that is the part where we give instructions from how the students will play the game down until how they'll have to look for words in the word puzzle. The second part of the instructions where you see at the bottom of the page is the instruction whereby after they've completed the first part, the word puzzle, the second part, the, the second, the next thing that they'll have to do is to be in groups of four to five and pick three emotions uh, and they'll have to come up with sentences with the emotions in it. The next material is that the teacher will have to prepare two different boxes whereby in the first box we will put the cut pieces of phrases into this first box and for the other box we are going to put the cut pieces of moods. So while they while the students are playing the game, first they will have to pick one piece of paper from the um, box of phrases 
and then they will have to pick another piece of paper from the box of moods. Reflection In preparing Moody Traveler, we went through various challenging processes in order to find the right key. The first step was to find the suitable lesson. We went through all the scheme of work from Form 1 until Form 4 and presented our choices afterwards. After a thorough consideration, we picked the scheme of work for Form 4, Lesson 59, Drama Games, Modes, Board Games. The next step was to come out with the activities or the game. Brainstorming the game alone took us about two to three days. Reason being, everyone was so creative with the games and we had to take time and carefully study the game's suitability with our lesson plan and also our objective, drama game. After a short celebration, we had to think of the name and that calls for another adventure. We literally had tons of ideas for the name and that did not help as much as we thought it would. <laughs> Some of the first draft were mood, uh, mood feud taken from the TV show Family Feud and the mood is right. And then uh, we decided to give it a rest for a while and continue to proceed with the game construction. This was the real deal and the real pain that we endured in completing Moody Traveler. We began uh, with selecting a crossword game for an example. After agreeing that would be a great base for our game, we continued to tune it into a drama game. Ideas after ideas were thrown in and we finally agreed to combine it with the game uh, act it out where students are given random words and they have to act it out to the class so that they could guess what the word is as the lesson plan pick was form four we tried to mix up the words for the puzzle with more low frequency words uh, this was done to make sure that the difficulty suits the intimidate level students. Also, during the process, a lot of what ifs arose. For example, what if students cannot act it out and the team cannot guess the word? And that is just one of the concerns that we had. But thankfully, we managed to figure that out. And in short, Creating Moody Traveler was a fun experience for all of us. It is a shame that we could not demonstrate this face to face in class, but nevertheless, we hope everyone finds this game to be fun, interactive, and if conducted in the real class situation, students would grow fun of it. And with that, we bid goodbye and thank you for showing interest in our Moody Traveler.